is said that no two ideas are opposite. As such, the opposite of any idea is the absence of the idea itself. In the various works we have examined over the course of this semester, the absence and presence of the ideas of freedom and oppression have been intertwined through the works of fiction we have examined. Here are four such ideas. In society, people tend to blame things beyond their own power and control for their own failures and shortcomings, when really, it is their own fault. People create the scenarios they are trapped in, and then cannot escape. Take, for instance, Dr. Frankenstein. When his creation runs amok and threatens his safety, he blames the monster rather than examining how his own actions have affected the monster. This dangerous path of behavior ultimately causes the monster to inflict more pain upon his family, ultimately killing him. Victor is trapped and oppressed by his own narrow-mindedness. Take also, for instance, In a Doll's House. The compelling story that Nora and Miss Lynde share of living in poverty suggests that through hard work, determination, and a little bit of luck, you can free yourself from poverty, or any societally oppressive construct. It is strange, the phenomena where two people can share a relationship, and one can feel like it is positive and beneficial, while the other can feel entirely destroyed. Failure to attempt to resolve this conflict can have disastrous consequences. For example, in a doll's house, Torvald is completely unaware of the fact his own wife is being blackmailed by his own former employee. Her inability to express herself to her husband drives her literally mad, until eventually she snaps, freeing herself from her own oppression. For another example, in The Strangers That Came to Town, the town either fails to see or fails to care that they are being oppressive towards the new family. Except for one man. Tom's father sees the oppression the new family faces. By opening his family and his heart to the newcomers, he frees them from perhaps unintentional oppression from the townspeople. Another example of people not knowing they are oppressed or being oppressive lies in 1984. The people who work at the Ministry of Truth do not realize the strange language of Newspeak is inherently oppressive. They also don't see that they too are oppressed by Big Brother. Even someone that looks mean and scary from the outside probably has endured some form of oppression. It is not so black and white that there are oppressors and the oppressed. Often, it is a cycle. A metaphor to explain this would be the chain of yelling as shown here. Though it is satirical in nature, it basically shows that higher powers oppress smaller ones, and so on and so forth. Take Krogstad from a doll's house. Though he literally blackmails Nora, oppressing her, he too feels oppressed and limited by the constraints of society and his boss, which fired him. In no way does this justify his actions, although it does explain them. Also, Frankenstein's monster. He is thrust into the world, alone and confused, afraid of what surrounds him. His attempts to learn of his surroundings are met with backlash, and his fear is that which drives him towards anger towards his creator. He probably should have just watched Star Wars. A common saying goes that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% what you make of it. In the case of freedom and oppression, the same can be said. It is about what you do when you're oppressed that defines you. Take the Duviches from The Strangers That Came to Town. When they are practically shunned by the rest of the town, they shirk and make themselves small. It is only when they are freed from their oppression that they can come out of their shells. However, sometimes the choice to overcome oppression can create problems, 
especially when it puts other people at risk. Take Frankenstein, for instance. In Frankenstein, Victor chooses to ignore his oppression from the monster. This only enrages the monster further, putting him further at risk than he already was. It inevitably causes the death of even more of his loved ones. He then chooses to respond to those aggressions aggressively. This drives Victor and his creation literally to the end of the earth, and they subsequently die. This problem also exists in 1984, as the attempts made to free himself from oppression end up leaving Winston brainwashed in a shell of his former self. His attempt at jumping through aforementioned windows inevitably kills him. It's interesting to see the contrasting and similar opinions that the authors in our course have about the themes of oppression and freedom. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed my, my visual essay. Thank you for watching. Girls are tempting, but I'm empty when you're gone and they say, Do you need me?